Hi, I'm Greg Stops, Area Agronomist with Pioneer in southwestern Ontario. And I'm here today to talk about planting populations with late seeded soybeans. Years like this can be stressful, with weather delays keeping us off the field for much longer than we all feel comfortable. Naturally, in years like this, some of the stresses and worries about planting our corn crop seep into our soybean crop as well. So it's good to remind ourselves that soybeans, for the most part, are far more adjustable than corn and shouldn't really be a source of major concern when planted well into June. Because the reproduction cycle in soybeans is largely triggered by photo period or day length and not by a more rigid set of vegetative phases that's driven by heat like in corn, soybeans adjust fairly well to being planted late simply by shortening up the amount of vegetative growth they experience before flowering. Once flowering is triggered by day length, which will only vary by a few weeks around the middle of the summer, soybeans run their course to finish only slightly later at harvest than they would have had they been planted during a more normal planting window. A good rule of thumb to keep in mind is that for every three weeks late to plant, you really only delay your harvest by one week. But while this rule of thumb is great for harvest, this adjustment or shortening up of vegetative development before flowering does come with some problems. Soybeans planted within a more normal planting window experience a lot more time to grow vegetatively before the summer sun triggers their flowering. This means they have the ability to develop a lot more nodes that can in turn develop into flowers and pods. With later planting, there simply isn't time for the soybeans to grow as much vegetatively, and therefore they can't develop as many nodes before flowering, reducing each individual plant's overall yield potential. But this can be overcome. Increasing your normal planting populations by about 10% until June 15th can help maintain the overall yield potential of your field. Sure, individual plants will have less potential pods, but the increased number of plants per field or per acre can make up the difference. After June 15th, our Pioneer research suggests that you should be upping your planting populations by 20%. And some research even suggests that by June 30th, you should be increasing those planting populations by as much as 30%. But I'll quickly tell you that 30% isn't really practical or economical, considering the limitations of some equipment, not to mention the seed costs. So I personally recommend that beyond June 15th, you operate with a bare minimum of increasing that seeding population by 10%. And if your equipment allows and your seed costs allow, you should consider pushing as high as 15 to 20% if it makes sense for your operation. Of course, there is one exception to this. In situations where you have high fertility fields and or a history of severe white mold pressure. In scenarios like those, be cautious when increasing your planting populations. Increase them by a maximum of 5 to 10%, if at all. The bushels you may lose by ultimately having less pods per plant in the field may just be a wise insurance policy that allows your canopy to breathe and prevents severe white mold infection that will cost you a lot more than just a few bushels. Now, obviously, with late planting, there can still be a lot of questions specific to your operation around planting populations or other agronomic management practices. If you want to know more, please reach out to your Pioneer sales rep or your local Pioneer agronomist. We're here to help and we're happy to provide you with our insights based on our extensive local knowledge and in-field experience. Thanks so much for watching this video. All the best with planting and stay safe. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter for more agronomy insights.